so hello hello everyone and first of all and welcome to the session today we are having tarun mawa sir with us again and he'll be continuing the series of with azure and he'll be talking about implement uh, implementing azure kubernetes services and i let me introduce tarun sir like he's lead devops at avb and he's multi phase personality having an incredible experience with azure so over to you sir yeah uh, good evening lakshit and thanks for hosting me uh, today evening i know it's a uh, weekend evening but yeah um, so uh, let's uh, let's start learn something so uh, yeah so the topic and agenda to of today talk would be uh, um, what is kubernetes service and how to implement that cm in in the azure so uh, yeah i think kubernetes came i think in 2014 it's been quite some time now more than 7 years so uh, like i'm i'm today i'm going to talk about uh, and google has uh, kind of uh, uh, it was a project in google and they publicly uh, like uh, there are will be it was uh, there in i think july 2014 it was uh, there uh, like they have uh, gone in the public preview so uh, so today i'm going to talk about the kubernetes version of uh, azure actually and like uh, to begin with uh, i think uh, so uh, I, i will be also sharing couple of resources so that you can guys, guys can go through it probably uh, the, the uh, one of the site could be the kubernetes.io itself where you will find ample amount of information uh, and then the second difference which i am taking is from the uh, microsoft official documentation site that again comes under az400 under create and manage containers using docker and kubernetes so uh, so containers can be managed using both docker and kubernetes so i'm going to talk about the docker part of it so um, let me uh, let me share my screen uh, yeah so i'm just sharing my screen and also uh, will go through the uh, try to go through some demo and see uh, how it functions so um, yeah so this is like uh, like uh, implementing kubernetes services so now the agenda is like uh, we'll go towards the introduction what is uh, we, i don't know those have so fancy slides but i think uh, it's good to walk through the official documentation of azure uh, how they um, are implementing the kubernetes uh, so uh, and how uh, like what is kubernetes so this is the agenda introduction kubernetes introduction to kubernetes and then exploring kubernetes services what are different services we have and then the architectural components i will be describing some of the architectural components which are essential for today's uh, uh, to to understand kubernetes as well as the demo part of it and then we have understanding kubernetes networking uh, we have uh, then the ingress controllers um, then we have the deployment units and then we'll go to the demo and implementing we'll see implementing it through the uh, continuous deployment pipelines and then we will also update the container images in the acr so uh, that's a complete walk through how we'll go through so first of all like what's this, what's kubernetes actually so uh, this is the one of the microsoft documentation site where i i will keep on posting some of the links so you can help uh, like to just post it so this is like to start with uh, uh, i think azure is a uh, a very good platform to start kubernetes so kubernetes if you want to learn you can go with either google uh, or um, or azure because there are the early adapters of uh, kubernetes in terms of containers in kubernetes so um, these are the two if you want to learn kubernetes you can go for either of these two clouds so that's why also today i'm focusing on towards the azure part of it so introduction to kubernetes kubernetes is a cluster orchestration technology that originated with the google as i said and is also called as kubernetes because there are eight letters between k and s and it is a platform for automating deployment scaling operations and containers and it creates a container specific infrastructure so it's not like we have only kubernetes in market we have other players like also like um, i have taken from the this slide so i was just uh, rolling back in here and there so now all down to kubernetes are the mesosphere dc os and uh, docker swarm docker swarm to uh, to run your container based application so uh, and when we will uh, go towards the exploring the kubernetes so which is our the second part exploring towards the kubernetes services so aks uh, is a microservice implementation as i said 
and it uh, reduces the complexity and operation overhead cumulative by offloading much of response to azure mostly is managed by azure i will show you the architecture components once we walk through after this slide aks manages much of the kubernetes resource for the end users um, they, they do they do by using uh, uh, they, they do it by making it quicker and easier to deploy and manage container applications then we uh, it also eliminates the ongoing operation maintenance burden by provisioning and upgrading and scaling provisioning upgrading and scaling is all done by most of the parties done by azure so but there are some customer managed also where we actually deploy the application some components are, are managed by azure and some are managed by the uh, uh, the customer or the application to which the um, uh, like uh, uh, they want to deploy the application so that is completely managed by customer or you or you or me like but some of that uh, the part is managed by azure so that i will show you which architectural part belong to azure and which part architecture belong to the application application or application team you can say so azure aks manages the following aspect of kubernetes cluster for you it manages critical tasks such as health monitoring uh, maintenance the simple cluster scaling it enables master node to fully enable the microsoft it leaves you responsibility only for managing and maintaining the agent nodes it ensures master nodes are free and you only pay for the agent running nodes uh, so like uh, if you were manually deploying kubernetes you will also pay for sources for the master nodes so you will also pay for the master nodes so now this is like uh, uh, we will go to the uh, architecture components uh, so see this is the uh, like uh, when you we go through the architecture components so this is like uh, a uh, few of the architecture components which we uh, then once we move through this one right then i will uh, different uh, iks components which will be going to deploy i will just going to cover in this section only so and then we will move to kubernetes networking it's not detailing because even i am learning kubernetes networking so but whatever i know i will tell so uh, so yeah but yeah uh, so to get started examining the aks architecture components the kubernetes cluster is divided into two components as i said cluster master node which provides the kubernetes which is the i think uh, if you go uh, let me uh, just uh, have a read slide of it so uh, cluster master nodes which is the left side of uh, kubernetes which provides the core kubernetes services and orchestration for application workloads nodes that uh, nodes that run your application workload so a kubernetes cluster is divided into two components one is azure managed one is customer managed so the the one you see in the left side of the square uh, a rectangle is uh, uh, basically azure managed the, which includes the api server etcd or scheduler uh, controller manager and the right side is customer manager which, which is composed of uh, nodes nodes in turn are consist of uh, uh, the uh, customer managed is a, like a is a cluster a cluster is uh, is there and then inside that a node is there and inside a node there are n number of pods and inside the pod there are container images which are running which are actually the application or hosted on top of the os so uh, now a workload is been reduced uh, uh, our entire system is coupled in a container image that consists of your os your applications your binaries all it is contained in a containers so see how uh, we have evolved from a monolithic application to microservices application that is also i will show you how we have moved to towards this but let's walk through the main uh, heart of the uh, kubernetes which is the these uh, this architecture which is you can say uh, so left side is the uh, azure managed is managed by azure which is the api server etcd scheduler uh, uh, controller manager but when you configuring it is not like kubernetes always for a cloud no you can configure kubernetes on the on premise as well but when you configure for on premise even the left side you have to manage yourself itself like the scheduler the controller manager api server and etcd so these are services this is a core services and the right side is the uh, where your application is being deployed and the actual uh, application is being deployed in the node pools so uh, runtime and the container runtime in the container actually where the and you, what you see in the square is uh, like uh, if you see in the square this is called as a, a container image uh, like uh, which is running inside a pod uh, so a kubernetes cluster divided into two components cluster master node which provides the core kubernetes services right and orchestration of application workloads this is the orchestration of application workloads as kubernetes is the orchestration uh, orchestrating agent engine so it, uh, it orchestrates your code 
to be deployed in a um, compressed container format and high availability also it offers so today uh, uh, very uh, kubernetes play is a it is a leader it is a leader of uh, uh, deploying your microservice based applications and nodes the third comes the nodes that run your application works so the node is where your application runs actually which is customer managed so the same thing is been shown here as well uh, like uh, customer master and customer you can um, like th these are the i think the main link i have given you but yeah this is also the um, the like documentation which you can refer uh, while you are um, like also uh, uh, like just uh, going through the same thing but just uh, 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 just uh, you can just refer to it so cluster master is over the left road so when you create a aks cluster cluster master is automatically created right and the cluster master is provided uh, as managed uh, uh, as well as abstract from the user. So, uh, so uh, etcd controller manager API server, it's all created already. And whatever you see in the, um, so see, whenever we we will see the demo, we will see how much we can cover. But I will at least provision AKS for you. I'm uh, I'm, I'm not confident of deploying the application also, but because that was failing for me uh, when I tried today before the demo. So, uh, but yes, at least I will I will make sure that you understand the concepts. So yeah, so the nodes, if you see, um, plus uh, like uh, uh, when you create a cluster, a cluster is um, cluster master is automatically created. This is called uh, so when you when we will walk through demo, you will see two resource group created. One is the actual uh, resource group where you want to deploy Kubernetes, and one is starting with MC underscore something. So that MC underscore something is where your application is being deployed, and uh, the one which is you entitled for creating a Kubernetes cluster that is deployed in the Azure managed resource group, which is the actual resource group. And the node one is where uh, all the components inside the node, uh, like of the container images, ACRs, and all those things, it will be stored in the, uh, uh, in, the in the separate cluster. So there will be two resource group created. One is MC, and one is the actual resource group. So you will see the changes there. So customer manage would be uh, uh, the one which you mentioned, uh, uh, create a resource group, and the Azure manage will be starting with the MC, which is will be having the core components like node pools, scheduler, etcd, API server, controller manager. All things with node pools, nodes will be there in the, um, this all management will be there in the MC underscore resource group. And then the customer manage will be the actual resource group where you want to deploy your Kubernetes cluster. So yeah, that's that's the difference. So now when you see cluster master, the so cluster master is a containing of uh, a couple of components which are um, which form the heart of uh, Kubernetes. One is the API server. Like API server is uh, how the underlying Kubernetes API is exposed. This component provides interaction of management tools like kubectl commands. You will you will see the kubectl commands in the Azure CLI. Uh, and Kubernetes dashboard that is maintained by Kube API server. API server is like to interact with your nodes. Once your nodes is deployed, you will use kubectl. So those kubectl commands are the API servers which interact with your nodes, uh, which is uh, towards the right inside customer manage. So th th this is the function of Kube API server. The other important component is the etcd. etcd is to maintain the state of a Kubernetes cluster and con configuration, the, the high availability, a EDCD is a key value, key value store within Kubernetes. It is a very important component in Kubernetes and it should be always backup. It is a key value pair. It stores the key value pair, uh, ETCD. Uh, this is the thing. And then comes the Kubernetes scheduler. The scheduler determines what nodes can be uh, can run the workloads and start when you create a scale application. So uh, scheduler is responsible for uh, scaling. You can say scaling if any. Uh, if you if any node uh, needs auto scaling, if the Kubernetes application is auto scaling, if there's a peak uh, during the uh, uh, highly transaction environment, it's a peak uh, like period during the holiday season. So the so scheduler schedules the um, Kubernetes um, jobs in a automatic fashion. So uh, whenever the workload increases to in the right side to on the nodes, so it will automatically allocate. Uh, nodes in a, um, uh, it will automatically uh, uh, allocate the pods and uh, to the nodes so it also take care if suppose if there is any pod which is orphaned which has not been assigned any node 
so it will also assign the orphan um, that, that orphan pod to the node because pod is always associated with a node so that is the function of scheduler it keeps a check and then comes the controller manager cube controller manager the controller manager oversees uh, several smaller controllers that do actions such as replicating pods and managing node replication so uh, replication replicating the nodes is being controlled by the controller manager so this is uh, of the four uh, important components of a cluster master and then comes the nodes in the node pools towards the right hand side where you see the kubelet uh, um, the the kubelet container runtime kube proxy uh, are the uh, are the p3 important functions uh, components kubelet is like uh, as I said, this uh, this is controlled by API server. So Kubelet is a way to interact to talk to your nodes. Kubelet is a Kubernetes agent that it's an agent, right? That processes the orchestration request from the cluster master and schedule the request containers. And now comes the Kube proxy. So Kube proxy handles virtual networking on each node. So um, the proxy routes as your traffic and manage IP addressing of service and nodes. So Kube proxy is nothing. So if you see queue proxy uh, types of uh, like queue proxy um, types of uh, uh, VPN in Kubernetes um, while deploying Kubernetes. Um, so, or you can say uh, as your Kubernetes uh, baseline architecture. Yeah, this is the one of the important components. So here comes the baseline architecture of Azure component is AKS. So uh, you can just go through it. It's a very important one. So where you actually understand uh, how uh, different methodologies through which um, this uh, Azure Kubernetes can be uh, deployed. So uh, then we have uh, uh, what you say, Kubernetes subnet to uh, IP address upgrade container image reference. So we have network contributor ACR pull. So, um, so network topology plan the IP addresses. So different. Uh, this is the one of the baseline architecture, uh, like uh, which which uh, you need to uh, uh, reference. This is while preparing for the first time Kubernetes guys. So um, you can, uh, uh, and this is the implementation of this architecture is available here. So this is the, uh, again, a case baseline architecture, which you want to you want to reference. So this is where you uh, can deploy your Kubernetes um, plus baseline cluster. So it's a very uh, aggressive, one, like I would say, uh, very good implementation over the Kubernetes, like, and it's a hub spoke model, which they have used so uh, to deploy and uh, uh, yeah i think this is this is the one so uh, the, if you see the networking part of it when we comes to networking because i think um, after the we have to understand some kubernetes networking also so when you uh, plan so there is a base formula how you plan the ip addresses it's a hub spoke model and uh, like uh, um, you have to plan in such a way that uh, uh, this is some. There is a formula actually which you need to refer, uh, like uh, integrating Azure Kubernetes uh, to Azure. So, uh, so there are two uh, types actually topologies. Uh, uh, CNI. So, Azure Container Networking, Azure CNI. Um, so, network topologies, network port to port traffic. So, difference in policies. Okay, network policies. Uh, this is covered in Azure CNI. Azure Cluster CNI. So, so there are two types of actually the you know, Azure uh, Azure CNI versus KubeNet. Yeah, this is very important, guys. Like when you um, these are some of the concepts in networking. Mm -hmm. Networking of uh, networking concepts for application uh, hosted in AKS. So um, Kubernetes basic is like uh, uh, when you uh, deploy, right? So there are two methods to uh, to deploy, as you saw. Uh, one is the uh, Azure CNI method, and one is the Kubenet method. So uh, uh, so this is uh, different concepts, natural concepts of application which you need to learn. And see what are the difference between a Kubernetes and Azure CNI. So, uh, 
so when you when you see uh, so this is the main component which i want to i was uh, just trying to show you so there are two methods of networking kubenet and azure cni kubenet is when uh, you can deploy a cluster in two of the network models kubenet and azure cni networking kubenet is like the network was are typically created the the, or the the structure the vnet is created for you and configured as the cluster is deployed so the uh, um, like uh, the uh, what you say the vnet the is already created with high number of ip addresses and and you deploy kubernetes on top of that vnet but whereas in uh, azure cni the cluster is connected to the existing virtual network so um, um, resources and configuration so uh, kubenet is when uh, you deploy a cluster along you when you are deploying aks right it, you are also deploying the uh, virtual network so that is called kubenet the uh, network source are typically created and configured as the cluster is deployed as you deploy the cluster uh, the vnet will also be created kubenet but on cni it's a advanced advance of uh, model of networking of uh, kubernetes like yeah mm, uh, AKS clusters are connected to the existing virtual network. It's connected to the existing virtual network and configuration. This is advanced. So these are the two type of network uh, models where the uh, Kubernetes is being deployed. So Kubernet is like uh, is the basic networking. Um, Kubernet, if you say whenever you deploy Kubernetes, it is VNet is also created. So it's a very basic networking. This one is very advanced where you have to fit in your Kubernetes into the already existing um, VNet. So this is like some of the things which you can go through uh, as your CNI, as I said, is the advanced one. And so uh, you create a bridge with as your virtual network and ports, uh, port to port communication, port to port communication also there with a bridge. Uh, this port, uh, a container image is residing in this port. This is uh, for as, as your CNI can interact with this port with a via bridge. So uh, one machine or one uh, application can access another application or so isolation is there like uh, uh, but the interdependent uh, applications can interact with each other through via a bridge this is if you say this is a bridge so you can say it's a port to port communication and then there is a node to port communication as well so these are the two networking models through which it can be deployed now uh, like uh, uh, now when we come to uh, this one right so uh, uh, like uh, here, uh, so let me again uh, show. This is um, uh, the control panel. Uh, this is taken from Q from Kubernetes.io. This is how their architecture reference. But the fundamentals are still the same. But is that is related to Azure? This is related to the core Kubernetes concepts. So if you see uh, uh, this left side, which I said you is uh, where I told to you is uh, Azure managed. Right side is uh, customer managed. So if you see the these are the components etcd scheduler api and api server api scheduling and this is the uh, controller manager what uh, controller manager right this is the cloud controller manager this is all controlled by a uh, control panel and then we have in nodes we have kubelet uh, k proxy uh, and kube uh, cuttle commands are all run by this thing so these are the main components of the in control panel, we have scheduler, cube proxy, kubelet, uh, etcd. Uh, in control panel, we have uh, uh, nodes as well. So uh, like it represents what are the different components of Kubernetes cluster. So we have API server, uh, like I just explained, screen and the controller manager and etcd. These are the some of the things which uh, one and uh, yeah, as part of our uh, demo also, uh, like, uh, like these are the uh, couple of uh, components which we will be going to deploy actually uh, so will you see uh, here so deploying a multi container so here uh, we'll just see uh, how we are deploying so uh, to so yeah these are the couple of for the demo purpose also uh, we will be uh, doing some uh, deployment uh, like uh, uh, like how we will deploying the images to the uh, via uh, DevOps tools, uh, Azure DevOps. So these are the uh, components which we'll be walking through. The Docker uh, is a software technology that provides a system level container visualization to easily deploy uh, application sandbox images 
is a read on template we will see the images also we will define the azure container registry um, uh, where kubernetes cluster will uh, take the images from the kubernetes cluster so and then we will have containers which will uh, will be actually hosting the application and the uh, the os images and then we will have the kubernetes which is the actual uh, containerized platform for hosting uh, multiple host and mechanism deployments and then we will have pods a pod is the basic building block of kubernetes and represent a executable unit of the work so um, the pod is usually a single container so a pod can, can contain multiple images so and a, a pod is again contained in a node so and then we have services uh, a services tells uh, other pods about the uh, services uh, that your application provides so this is a very important component. Then we have the deployment YAML, which will be creating and deployment controller, which provides the declarative updates for pods. And then we will have Kubernetes manifest files, which will be uh, manifest with the deployments, whereas service and pods can be defined in JSON. So, uh, so service pods will be defined in JSON, with, but Kubernetes manifest will have the deployment files. There's one thing which I want to show. Uh, so how we evolved in Kubernetes. This is, I, I think, uh, can go through these uh, like uh, to go through uh, all these things you can just uh, yeah this is the very uh, like a uh, site for the kubernetes which actually um, maintains this kubernetes documentation and also the uh, like uh, the uh, technical know hows uh, you can learn a lot of from these uh, site actual kubernetes sites uh, so it will give you more import um, like uh, advantage and yes uh, uh, while moving forward uh, like uh, let us go through so when i go to uh, so now it's just, just an overview uh, which i've given of the kubernetes uh, networking then we have um, the ingress controllers so we'll see what are the ingress controllers again uh, uh, like uh, we'll go through uh, cluster master and we have pods nodes and pods so you, we have kubelet kube proxy which and virtual networking q proxies handle the virtual networking if it is a azure cni method or the uh, kubenet method and then we have container runtime which actually um, is the component that allow containers application to run and interact with more resources as virtual network and storage in a case docker is used as container runtime then we have pods container uses pods to run an instance of an application a pod represent a single instance of the application then we have pods. So this pod is contained in a pod is contained in the container. So this is comprising of the pods actually. So these are the best uh, just example uh, condition Kubernetes networking. When we have uh, like we have uh, two methods, right? Q two methods to deploy. And um, the, the, so now there comes the following service types which are available. Uh, if you see here, uh, just uh, so services which are available in uh, Kubernetes like cluster IP, this service creates um, an internal IP uh, for use within the cluster. However, it is suitable for internal only applications that support other workloads within the cluster. So whenever there's an internal traffic with, with uh, we don't want to export to the external words, then you configured uh, your Kubernetes as a cluster IP. Like internal traffic is uh, exposed via port 80 to cluster IP and then it is distributed to the pods with port 80. This is one cluster IP service. Then we have node port. Like uh, this service creates a uh, port mapping on the underlying node. Port mapping, you, uh, like uh, uh, it create uh, port mapping uh, for the underlying nodes, enabling the application to be accessed directly with the node IP and port address. So uh, when you suppose uh, in the front end, what we will see in the demo, front end we will deploy ASP.NET application and the backend we will deploy a redis cache each, each with a specific port so we need to give the port number also to with the application with the for example redis cache is a separate port and for example if we are deploying the tomcat or apache in the front end uh, then we have to uh, give a port 80 or port 8080 so uh, so that is when we are communicating with the ip address and the uh, port that is where comes uh, node port node port uh, uh, way or uh, is a service this is also called a service from uh, like how we interact when we incoming traffic through ports and accessing through ports and the ip then this is the second service node port third is a load balancer so which is quite common one where like incoming traffic uh, you will 
here comes the ingress controller so some application workloads uh, implement uh, uh, load balancer some represent uh, the uh, what you say uh, apart from load balancer there is ingress controllers so load balancer operates in layer 4 tcp layer 4 so whenever incoming uh, traffic comes at port 80 it is redirect to a particular nodes according to the request and then uh, uh, then uh, it will redirect to a specific pod inside that node so this service this service creates a load balancer resource configures an external IP address and connects the requested pods to the load balancer backend pool so the node balancer backend pool uh, it will be uh, connected so and load balancing rules are created to the desire to allow customer traffic to reach the application so load balancing rules are created uh, for the uh, on the desired port right to allow customer traffic to reach the application so these are the backend ports for backend nodes and these are the front-end nodes this is you can say front end node this is the other back end nodes so uh, 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 for one would be running the front end nodes would be running some application the back end ports would be running the um, the database so that's uh, what is the, the third type of services so now um, when you say uh, after this like uh, just uh, uh, i think ingress controller uh, is what we can um, uh, see the next because this is very important because actually i have spent spending half an hour um, i think it's more than half an hour now talking because these component is uh, important to understand before we uh, we actually go to the the i can show you some demo quick demo so these are the main components that form the heart of the kubernetes if you don't understand this then it's it's uh, like you wouldn't be able to understand the actual concept behind Kubernetes. Um, Lakshit, uh, I would like to take a one minute uh, pause here if we have we have any questions. Uh, otherwise, I can continue. Let me check if if uh, we have uh, questions. So, uh, no questions. Yeah, no questions. Everything. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then we are uh, so ingress controller. This is a very important uh, aspect of the Kubernetes. See, either we saw in the last slide, either we could have deployed with the uh, what you say, uh, like uh, uh, what you say, the load balancer, and either it could be an ingress controller. So usually we implement via ingress controller. So when the link which I gave you uh, on the uh, baseline architecture, if you see, um, so. They have implemented, um, uh, so ingress controller works on layer seven, whereas traffic manager works on layer four. So that's the difference actually. And uh, uh, if you see, uh, this is load balancer implementation. And then uh, you have the ingress controllers as well. Uh, so this is hub and spoke model with, through which they have deployed. So private link and Azure key. Then we have, yeah, gateway they have deployed as uh, part of layer seven and uh, this is a web application gateway this is this is internal node balancer which is layer four this is the application gateway which is layer seven which is also the ingress controller so this is internal balancer to manage the internal nodes where are application hosted this won't be exposed to external customer but this application gateway would be exposed to the external customer so this is uh, the ingress controller or the application gateway and this part which you are seeing, this is the load balancer, which uh, have the internal IPs or internal mappies, which are we don't want to export to the end customer that is mapped to this internal load balancer. Whereas uh, uh, like the uh, the application gateway or um, the application gateway or the uh, ingress controller is a layer seven, which is actually exposed to public. So this internal load balancer again is connected to the application gateway. You can understand in this way. So this is how it's managed. So uh, so this is the ingress controller, which is actually exposed to the public. So we'll see here. So when you create load balancer type service and underlying Azure load balancer resource is created, right? But the challenge is load balancer operate only at layer four, as I said. The service is unaware of the actual applications and cannot make any other routing considerations. So then, then comes the ingress controllers. Ingress controllers works at layer seven, as I said, it is it, like an application gateway in the OSI layer, uh, layer, uh, layer zero to layer seven, uh, and then uh, it's layer at layer four. We have the uh, what do you say, uh, the 
load balancer, Azure load balancer. In the layer seven, we have uh, ingress controller or the application gateway. So then comes the ingress controller that works at layer seven and can use use more intelligent rules to distribute your traffic. Uh, everyday use of ingress controller like is to route the HTTP traffic to different application based on the inbound URL. So see incoming traffic. So it has the logic intelligent rules to be applied. All things you can do in the ingress controller. Uh, it's it's a layer seven. So when, when, whenever an incoming traffic comes, it knows uh, where to redirect your traffic to uh, like um, a block or store. And then we have a port 80 communication um, to going from uh, service to the ports. Uh, like this is a node. So it knows intelligently how and where to route the traffic ingress controller. There are different implementation of ingress controller concept, right? One example is the Nginx ingress controller. So we have different type of ingress controllers as well. Now we have Nginx ingress controllers as usually you will see uh, Nginx ingress controllers. So others uh, type are ALP ingress controllers and GC uh, ingress controllers. So now we have uh, this, I think, which I have explained as well, virtual network, basic networking and advanced networking. This is KubeNet and this is Azure CNI. Uh, which we saw, right? Uh, basic is the KubeNet and the advanced is Azure CNI, which I just showed you. So now we will go through the deployment units. So I, I think uh, it's it's, uh, it's clear, but yeah, you can refer to these slides as well. Uh, Redly is available. So that's why I don't like reading slides because all the content is available in Microsoft do official document itself. So then we have uh, exploring the deployment units. So what is the other deployments units? So we have Kubernetes use the term pods to package applications. A pod is a deployment unit and it represent a uh, like a, a running process in the cluster consists of one or more container and configurations. So a controller usually create pods. A controller, if you see a controller in the architecture, uh, this controller usually creates the pods. The controller uh, is the main component. Uh, controller usually creates pods which monitor them and provide self-filling capability at the cluster level, right? Uh, pods are described by the YAML or JSON. Uh, YAML or JSON pods, um, like it's a YAML or JSON file. You will see that also. Pods that work together to provide functionality or group into service called microservices. So my pods that are, indeed, uh, are dependent on each other, they work together like uh, uh, to create microservices. So we have for example, a front-end pod and a back-end pod would be could be grouped in one to one service. So a front-end pod and uh, back-end pod can serve as a one service. You can deploy an application to Kubernetes by using a Azure CLI, which can manage your cluster. Or uh, there are different methods to deploy Kubernetes. One is Kubelet, KubeCTL CLI, uh, and the other is through uh, deployment pipeline. Uh, we'll see how much we can cover, but yes, this is. Like uh, by running kubectl command uh, on your build agent, it is possible to deploy Kubernetes pods from Azure DevOps. So we'll generally we will see that uh, by running kubectl on a build agent, we will see that how to deploy the Kubernetes pods from Azure DevOps. It is also uh, possible to use management API directly. So this is like this will also we can use. Now comes the continuous uh, either or deploy network cluster. You can do either falling through the Azure shell and this already a uh, as your uh, uh, this thing available uh, uh, voting app, which they have created to uh, to create the uh, uh, the container, and then we can. Uh, this is a very simple demo, a complex demo. Uh, it's like uh, it's a different different thing. This is the somewhat complex demo, I would say, like where we have to. Uh, this is like uh, which we have to go through is like. Uh, let me go to the uh, this thing. So now having gone through this, so say there are two demo demo. So this is uh, this is through Azure uh, Azure CLI um, Azure CLI, and this is through uh, again Azure CLI as well as Azure DevOps. So I think uh, let's try to cover uh, the through the simple Azure CLI first, and if time permits, we will also go through the other one. But I think with this one, you will get some idea uh, how it is like. Otherwise, you will also see uh, it will take 40, 45 minutes from here, guys, because it's a little, uh, yeah. To understand it, uh, we have to uh, do uh, like some kind of stuff. So let's see um, uh, how let's let's start with the, uh, with the demonstration. 
so when we have where is that uh, yeah so um, uh, I have my uh, subscription right um, so this is my subscription and this is my shell pump right so we are SCR so so this is my shell, shell I have my this thing right so if I go to uh, all resources this is already deployed my uh, this thing is there SQL storage is there uh, storage is for CLI this this storage account is uh, uh, needed actually so this is my sh shell uh, Azure CLI so I will be creating one um, one kind of uh, uh, what do you say Azure group uh, will create one uh, Azure group CLI um, uh, Azure uh, connection cluster so we will create one uh, cluster uh, we will create one oh, sorry uh, the resource group right and then we will create the um, uh, one kubernetes cluster with a node count as one and enable we will only enable also monitoring also we will enable so this is like we have created it so it will just go to resource groups I think this is created. So this is created now. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this is created. So now we'll have uh, um, uh, the, the, so Cloud Shell already had uh, has the uh, CLI AKS tools already it has. So I will just uh, um, like uh, it is. Uh, I think it will. Uh, will create uh, the this thing. It will actually create the cluster, my AKS cluster in the this thing. Um, so we have six. Just remember, we have six resource group right now, and uh, this is one of the resource group where we have just started to create it. Uh, while it will take some time, uh, and uh, till that time we have. Uh, uh, the other demo also I can just uh, show um, what is it like and uh, uh, you can just go through it. It's a little lengthy one I would say. Uh, uh, deploying a multi-container application as your Kubernetes service. All you need to have is your Azure subscription, one uh, DevOps uh, organization and a project. So even if a project is not there, it's okay. But this is like what they have done in this one. They have... Uh, uh, what to say they have deployed a dockerized dotnet application which is called my health clinic um, and and is deployed to kubernetes cluster and do devops and uh, the backend is the redis cache um, right uh, so uh, yeah there is a m scale uh, manifest file and a load balancer is in the front end and redis cache is in the back end as we saw the front end and the back end ports so um, this is how they are deploying right so if you see here this is like uh, uh, contributed by uh, Muhammad Ridwan in this month. So, Kubernetes service like when we uh, uh, get to Git repo, here CI pipeline, it will contain to the container images. It will deploy the image to the uh, ACR through via uh, Docker deployment uh, via Kubernetes. So, Kubernetes will deploy the image to the ACR. Uh, the Docker it will Docker is build the image and then it will put up. Uh, uh, a ready image to the ACR and then the application will be launched from the uh, container registry. So this is the build process of uh, how it is like. So what they are doing in this demo is uh, there are a couple of components which needs to be deployed. Like here ACR will be deployed AKS as your SQL for the backend, And then we have the .NET application with the Azure DevOps Tools Then they are uh, doing config in the database and using a CD in Azure DevOps and then initiating the build to automatically deploy the application. This is how the second demo looks like. Uh, yeah, so this is, I can just bring a quick reference. Um, like I'm not sure which is uh, the, just hold on. So I actually lost, yeah, this one. So this is the uh, demo uh, for the second one. So let us see uh, till what point it has been. Uh, achieved uh, so so I think um, we were on the screen where it was already deploying it so uh, with my subscription 
um, like uh, yeah, this has been deployed. It's still running, but yeah, I think it should be uh, reached some as the point. Yeah, if you see here, six resource groups. So let me refresh it. Yeah, if you see here, now it is seven. So uh, if you see, uh, see, uh, same thing it has been doing. Public IP has been created. So this is uh, the, you can say the MC part is like the, uh, uh, the uh, managed by Azure. This is managed by Azure. And uh, that is uh, the one which is inside this Kubernetes actual AKS cluster. It's managed by you. So this is Kubernetes cluster, AKS agent pools. So these are the public IP address. Uh, this is still uh, going on. So uh, eight items have been created now, right now. So like public IP address, network security group, node pools. So this is, uh, if you see, this is the Kubernetes, this is the load balancer, this is. So you will deploy the application to this Kubernetes workload. Frontend IP address, it says this is the public IP address. Backend pools is like something which uh, uh, it has been registered like uh, outbound pool. It's, um, this, these are the, um, the VMSS instance, the backend pools. Health probes also you can configure. So this is the load balancer layer, layer four. Uh, uh, we have two backend pools here. Uh, AKS outbound backend pool and Kubernetes one. So, uh, and then we have, uh, this is the managed entity. Uh, so service principal managed entity uh, are the ways to connect to your Kubernetes cluster and to the different resources. And these are, this is the virtual network to which it has been deployed. So on top of it, it's a, it's see uh, here, the uh, the virtual network is created along with the uh, as your uh, Kubernetes deployment. So which type of networking it would be? It would be as your KubeNet, KubeNet one. As, as your CNI is the, when you deploy Kubernetes and already created a VNet, but this is a KubeNet one where your virtual network is created along with your uh, cluster. So this is your virtual network with the address space. This is eight address by default. I am not changing anything. So whatever values were there and subnet, which is taken 16. So more than, it is uh, more than 10,000 you will say. But generally this is not followed. Uh, 16 is not taken. Uh, and there are, there are formulas to calculate uh, that. So uh, like, uh, so uh, IP, IP formula for formula for hosting Kubernetes for hosting uh, Kubernetes. Ah, so this is the configure Kubernetes and these are the like formula is there. Like how much you require using Kubernetes and working with your own IP address in is in Kubernetes service. So this is the formula like uh, which you have to follow uh, like uh, uh, the ranges are also given. So this is a Kubernetes, right? A simple slash 24 inch can support 251 nodes cluster. It is giving you that one, right? These are the, these figures are very important to in designing your uh, uh, network architecture. So in Azure CNI, uh, it has slash 24 inch and, uh, and uh, like, uh, so uh, almost 110 ports can be supported with a, with a IP range of slash 24 in Kubernetes. This is Kubernetes through which we are deploying right now. So, um, and this is the formula for AC. Generally formula is needed when we are configured, configuring as your CNI networking. When your unit is already there, you are deploying Kubernetes on top of it. So then the formula is needed. And like this is the planning IP address of a cluster. This is where uh, it comes into uh, like, uh, what should be the design consideration? Like how much IPs you need to collect it to the pods? So these are the, uh, when you are configuring, so Kubernetes and the, uh, uh, Kubernet and this is the Azure CNI method of doing the planning your network architecture. And see, this is provision now. So if you see here, um, subnet uh, 16 range is there. So this is not, uh, now this is the virtual machine scale set. This is the high availability concept. So uh, it will um, have this node pool, one node pool, right? So this is VMSS, it's hosted in the virtual machine scale set. And this is under this particular uh, networking. This is associated with this particular v, uh, subnet, uh, this uh, VMSS. And uh, yeah, so these are the some of the inbound and outbound port tools um, for this one. And then we have the route table. So 
either you can create your nsd or you can define a custom route table so routes already already defined by here so address prefect virtual appliance next stop is virtual appliance or virtual network gateway internet it can uh, uh, it's an advanced concept so you can just go through first and then uh, yeah a case subnet is connected to a case subnet so this is the route table and then we have then nsd as well so for defining custom routes we do a route table then we have nsds also inbound security rule these are the inbound and the outbound uh, by default which are open to the clusters and uh, public ip address is we have this public so that your customer uh, your application can be accessible so this is the front end this is the front end part so uh, this is how uh, like uh, these are the couple of components we are deployed and uh, like uh, in this one we you have the your actual cluster you know, which is called my aks cluster and then you have this is a 1.2.7 so you can so this is a you can also upgrade this one this is taken care by um, uh, like uh, upgrades are taken care by the etcd schedulers all these things so there are plan for upgradation also you need to preserve extra ip addresses otherwise you can't upgrade so uh, you can upgrade through portal also this is the current one until this time uh, 1. 22.4 is available in uh, as, as your uh, AKS. So 22.4, this is uh, being deployed here. So this is the version of the cluster and namespace. If you see, you can create different namespace according to the, as of now, there are four namespaces. This is again a different concept namespace. So each uh, dev team or anything uh, or test team work in their own namespace. Default cube, uh, node, lease and then public system. So these are the default namespaces. Uh, so it's a container where your developers can work in a particular allocated container. You can say namespace a container. So different teams can have different namespaces according to their uh, environment and their working things, right? And these are the workloads, the deployments. Right now you have uh, these many deployments and these are the number of pods which are configured by default. Uh, with this one cube system these are cube system namespace the they see namespace you have not created these are cube system namespaces like for oms agent like uh, the monitoring matrices uh, like cube proxy as i was explaining oms agent core dns services and then we have the replica sets and, um, and then we have stateful uh, sets daemon sets so daemon sets which are uh, backend system which keeps on running Cube proxy, these are the system ones, cube system namespaces, these are. Cube system, these are hosted in this namespaces, these workloads, which I was uh, showing you. Then we have service and ingresses. I think this is something Kubernetes DNS is already deployed. So we'll try to deploy one more and see uh, the difference. And then we have this persistent storage. Uh, persistent storage, if we configure volume also, for example, any particular application, uh, and then we have persistent storage though so this requires a detailed understanding of advanced kubernetes concept so this is some of the uh, like uh, uh, concepts uh, service and ingresses uh, this is also services with running inside kubernetes so uh, this is um, yeah then this is it and then um, there is one uh, after this uh, like once we have done this we'll create uh, like uh, once we have done this, we will uh, get my, uh, my credentials so that I can just query. So, uh, so if you see here, this is the JSON format which is they have given me. Like this is the JSON format which they have given me. Uh, the um, like my class for my cluster. So uh, CLS. So yeah. Um, so now it will uh, like. Uh, it will say they already is there so yes so dir if you do so if you see here um, so cd uh, q so this is storing my uh, this thing uh, my so this is a config file This is storing my cluster information, my, my sorry, my certificate um, sharp print, and this is um, just wrote down. This is like uh, cluster and the port and the my AKS cluster and the SHA value, and this is the cache file. So yeah, to, so this is needed to uh, get the control of the pods, right? And then we will have uh, 
uh, get nodes. He can configure Kubelet is a way of interacting with your uh, nodes, right? Which I which I told you earlier in the session. So Kubectl will uh, without this uh, credential manager, right? You can't list your pods. So if you see there, it's in there is nodes is running here. Now you can also do a pods. So uh, pods are also there is no resource to found in the if one, there is no pod which is running, we will deploy the no, container images. We will deploy in the pod. So this in the node is running. This is which you saw earlier also. This is just 10 minutes before which we have created this pod. And uh, now we will create a file name as your vote.yaml. So we'll just go through that link again. Um, yeah, so uh, create a NKS cluster. So this is like get nodes. Now create a file name uh, as your vote.yaml copy into yaml definition so uh, i think we already i have already have this but yes as your um, yeah this is the latest one so uh, this week i think we can deploy so if you see here yaml uh, file try to understand this one this is the deployment yaml file so this is the azure vote bank this is the front end speculations uh, these are the uh, um, the specifications Replica is one set which you said, which you just saw selected one replica set for the node. If any uh, higher availability is required, it will replicate by one increment value of the node by one. This is replicas. Azure um, vote back is the backend and application deploys. This is the name specification. Again, container is this is the uh, vote back radius uh, image, it's which you've been deploying and uh, CPU also we have allocating. CPU and the memory, and this is the CPU and memory which we are allocating to the Redis cache. Container port is uh, like node port which I was showing you. This is 67 for Redis cache, and for um, Azure backend, it's also again the same. Uh, this is the, again the replica front end. This now comes the front end. This is the kind of deployment front end replica one. So here uh, we have deployed again the, uh, the request CPU and like limits maximum CPU allocation. This is minimum, this is maximum values. Port is 80 for the front end, for the back end is 67, which is a radius cache. Uh, and this is uh, again a name radius back end pool. And the uh, service now, this is service. Now, previously it was a kind is deployment here. This is deployment. Uh, all you see is a manifest is that uh, now we have deployment kind also. We have service also. We have deployment also deployment service is there and we have a service also uh, so we have two deployments and two services deployments is as your vote back and uh, as your vote front and, uh, and this is like a deployment type of the kind this is service as your vote back where you actually define um, the uh, what you say uh, the service your front bank so front is the load balancer and the back end is the redis cache is the same thing now we will do a cube apply cube cattle apply so i think uh, so this is the uh, command to uh, like uh, uh, like this is like already i have this yaml file yaml file so let me apply it so this is like once deployed. Uh, so now I'm trying to deploy the service actually. It says as your front end only created. Uh, so it says, I think something is wrong here. So, so you will destroy. So it says uh, like what front end only created uh, like uh, let me open so I think it should be deployed in this way but let's see what's the error so again deploy when we will do get pods it will list actually no answers found okay so actually it is deployed but uh, the backend service is um, somehow not getting deployed so if you do a get service uh, as your front end uh, vote front because it has been created watch 
to see uh, the C cluster IP also been assigned now. So uh, only thing is the application is not getting launched in this. So uh, front end, if you see, uh, let me go to the namespaces ingress. As your friend see, this has been deployed. So now uh, this application is not running because our YAML was wrong. It's not taking, uh, this application is not launching because only uh, this is successful. Uh, it has given only one output, which is uh, uh, services only created deployment has not been created. So I think uh, that's why it is not browsing, but let's figure out uh, if we can fix it. I uh, will try to fix it. So open file. So Azure vote.yaml. So let's open this. So it says only, uh, so this service is only been created, this one. So deployment has not been created. There are a couple of errors in this one. So like, uh, each container in the board must have a unique name, cannot be updated. So it seems only one service is getting deployed, uh, but uh, although I'm not able to find any syntax error, let me check for syntax error also. Variety ML. Well, let's uh, delete the previous one, maybe. Uh, so, So I think there is some maps keys must be unique YAML. So I think anyhow I am unable to access uh, maybe Lakshit uh, like uh, let me give you the IP. Let me try to give. I think I, I will be behind the VPN. So I'm not sure if I will be able to access it. So check if you are able to access although I'm not sure this should work. But uh, let's try to I think port is 31978. Yeah, this is port blocked. By any chance you are able to access this uh,
like uh, this one um, what is the uh, thing which is coming for you nakshit uh, can you just try to access it no shoes Ports and then Okay, I think we'll just import it and see.
I think it's not working, so I think we have to end this in one now, right here. But I think conceptually it must be clear somehow that how it, it works. So I think that's it. Uh, but yes, I think I would encourage you to perform this demo. Uh, if you have any doubts, especially in the uh, the big demo, which uh, um, like uh, is, um, which is, I think, the Azure DevOps Labs one. Um, this is the most important one. So just go through it. If you have any issues, let me know. Um, I think that, thanks, Lakshit. I think uh, over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the session on Azure Kubernetes. That was a basically very insightful session. The theory part you have covered, I personally liked it, like the Microsoft Docs. See, uh, everything is available online, we all know. But the way you have explained everything so clearly, that was fascinating to us. So Thank you. thanks for joining in. And the demo you have shown, I'll try to work it on. And uh, because my Azure subscription is in not working properly, I'm not sure why it is happening. So I'll okay. try to make it. Um, the the demo for the Azure DevOps. from Azure DevOps I could have shown, but today my agent pools are not working fine. So uh, we'll, we'll try yes, to, sir, this uh, to see. Yeah, yes, sir, this happens see. with us every time. So no worries, we can't <laughs> say. Yes, some code is running right now, so it will run after 10 minutes also. This happens every time, yeah. so no worries. Yeah, so thank you, sir. Thank you for joining in. I hope we will be having a lot more insightful session in the future. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we have a lot more things planned for you. Do join our Discord community channel. We do every Friday. We do a quiz there, and top five winners get the goodies there. So, thank you guys. Thank you all for joining, and thank you, sir. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thanks, Lakshya. Thank you. Bye.